right. Well, hey, everybody, it's Grim Green, GrimGreen.com. Back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again here for another review. How are you guys doing? I actually had a really good weekend, a lot of good quality time with the pickle, but it's not about that. What we're talking about today is this guy right here. This is the iJoy Captain. And right now, in order to get to know this mod just a little bit better, what we're going to do is go up close, as we often do. That's right. Quick, short, up close time. Yeah. Alright, yeehaw. Well, we're going to be looking at the iJoy Captain top to bottom. Some scratches, some stickers, some misread ohms. Oh yeah, that happened too. So first things first, my least favorite part of this is this big ugly button. You know what? It's whatever. It works fine. Some people will probably go, that looks cool. And other people like myself will go, I don't like the way that looks. That just, it looks really super big and tacky to me. And I just don't like it. I'm not saying that's a negative. That's just literally me nitpicking this and not enjoying this button. But you know what? It's whatever. It works fine. This carbon fiber on here is definitely, definitely just a sticker. I feel like with a blow dryer or maybe a heat gun, you could easily get this off. I've been picking at it like crazy. See, look at that. I could, I could definitely peel this off and put a new sticker on there, but you're going to be left with like, you know, sticker goo all over the place, which is why you probably need a heat gun or at the very least a blow dryer to peel this off completely and put something else on there. And this corner actually started peeling up before I started picking at it. I only started picking at it because it started peeling up. This is literally after a week's worth of use, this sticker just kind of started peeling off. And to me, yeah, that's a huge bummer. Also, the plastic on here is really super soft. You can see I got some hairline scratches on here. And what I actually did to get this damage was I just took a pair of my scissors. This is a pair of scissors I used to cut cotton. And I just very lightly sort of started scratching on here. I mean, really lightly. No effort at all. I'm just letting the weight of the scissors do it. And yeah, look at that. Look at all these fucking scratches appearing. And you know what? Uh, those don't go away. That's there forever. This is literally just the weight of the scissors doing this, making insane scratch marks all over this display, dude. Same thing with the back where it's branded Captain. That plastic, really very soft. No weight. No weight is happening. And you can see scratches. Scratches like crazy. These are not going to stay shiny for more than a few days. Right out of the box, it looks very cool to have this smoky plastic over this nice display, but when you see it in the light, I mean, that was no effort. Just scratches, scratches for days. If I really dug in here, yeah, I could make some pretty deep scratches in there that will literally never go away. I know there's people probably cringing right now, but you know what? I wanted to test out that plastic, and unfortunately, it's just really super soft. The display, on the other hand, super beautiful. Watts, resistance, volts, and the menu system is one, two, three, and you can get to the menu system, and you can do whatever you want. Power mode, TCR, custom TCRs. You can reset your puff counter if you want. This is literally all there is to the menu. You have these options. And the only system settings you really get are to adjust the screen, like how long it stays on. So I have it set for 30 seconds, which means after I take my finger off the button, the screen will stay illuminated for 30 seconds, which I find to be rather helpful. 10 seconds is a bit too short, so I leave it on 30 seconds. And other than that, one, two, three, you can go from power mode to temperature control mode. You pick your wire out, nickel, titanium, stainless steel. You have custom TCRs as well. And when you go to regular wattage mode and you press this, this is where you can choose normal, soft, Soft, hard, your user, you know, uh, ramp up times. This is how hard it hits right out of the gate before it gets to its designated wattage. I just leave it on normal. I don't feel the need for hard or soft. I don't like any ramp up time. When I press the button, I just want it to fire at the wattage and I'm okay with dealing with that slight little ramp up time that happens. But yeah, after you get to know it, this display is really easy to read and the menu system, one, two, three, menu system, super easy to navigate and set things up if you wanted to, but me, I just leave it in normal power mode and it gives me everything I need. So my subscribers were also telling me that the captain doesn't necessarily read your resistance correctly, which I thought if that's true, man, what a huge bummer. So let's look at this display and see what the resistance says. Right now, this reload RDA is reading at a 0 0.3 
eight. And on a DNA 200, it's reading 0 0.39, one, point one, you know, number off in your resistance. It is not a huge deal uh, at all. I don't see that as being a problem at all. 0.38 to 0.39, no big deal at all. So my captain doesn't seem to suffer from the resistance, uh, you know, discrepancy that a lot of people are reporting. If yours does, let me know below and let me know how off it is. Some people were saying it's really high, like as much as 0.10 off. Um, I haven't found that to be the case in any of my sciencing. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my iJoy captain functions as it is supposed to as far as the resistance goes. Super easy to get the batteries in and out. They just slide in and out and the sled is clearly marked negative and positive. It closes neat and cleanly every single time and it powers on every single time. Yeah, fuck. Look at those scratches, dude. Anyway, yeah, there you go. That's the captain up close and personal. Now let's get back out to normal view. So yeah, there's a few little quirks with this guy. The screen really conducive to scratching. I mean, just it scratches so unbelievably easy that it's I mean, it's it's crazy how easy this scratch is. The sticker coming up on the side, yeah, that's a huge bummer. Oh look, wait, no, I can take this all the way off. Never mind. Wait, wait, this might not be a huge bummer, guys. Okay, so wow, look at that. I got it mostly cleanly off. There's some some sticky over here on this side that I could probably get still. Oh, I got most of it. Okay, okay. Wait, we're headed in a good direction right now. So I know they do make um, you know, skins, stickers that you can buy to put on here. This sticker, I mean, it came completely off. I didn't need a heat gun or anything. I'm really glad I tried to peel that off right now. I was kind of operating under the assumption that it was a lot like those wood books skins. Do you remember the wood skins that I put on my Relo like a year ago? Those were really very difficult to get off and required a lot of hair dryer, hair dryer, hair dryer, then pick and peel and pick and then more hair dryer and more hair dryer. I was just assuming, you know what happens when you assume, but I was just assuming that these stickers would be just as difficult to take off. In fact, now that I know they're not, I'm going to take both of them off. Oh yeah, look at that. You just go slow. Look how slow, look how clean everything's coming off. Oh, go slow. You got to want it. You know, you gotta earn it. Boom, there you go. And now we have a naked captain, naked captain. Hmm. But we have a completely naked captain now, so forget anything I said about the sticker coming off. The sticker came off, but you know what? I just peeled the sticker off, and now we have a nice smooth finish underneath. They could have released the mod this way with no stickers, and it would have looked just as nice. It would have been just as clean and nice all the way around it. But like I said, I do know they sell spare stickers and replacement stickers, so you can kind of customize this a little bit, which is pretty great. I feel like overall the best part of this mod is the batteries that it uses. When you buy this mod, it comes with two 2700 batteries, and I cannot tell you enough good things about these batteries. So I was using this mod exclusively. I mean, only mod I've used for the last week is this Captain mod from iJoy. I initially plugged on a 0 0.08 ohm dual fuse Clapton coil, which is very, very low. 0 0.08 ohms, yeah, that's a super low build. I knocked this up to 130 watts. And on these batteries, I got at least 24 hours of use. And I'm not saying 24 hours of constant use, I'm saying at nine 30 a.m. I put in freshly charged batteries and I didn't have to put them back on the charger again until 10 a.m. the following morning. Keep in mind that I was only, only using this mod exclusively. I got that much battery life out of these batteries using a 0 0.08 ohm build at 130 watts. To me, that's incredible. If I was using a dual 18650 mod that night or that morning, I would have had to change my batteries. That mod would have already been dead, but this this one, dude, those batteries just kept on ticking. And the higher your resistance is gonna be, the longer your battery life is gonna be. This is a 0 0.38 ohm coil on here. I've been rocking it at 83 watts for already 24 hours. Yesterday at, it was about two o'clock p.m. I put this atomizer on here, 0 0.38. I put my batteries in here and I've just been vaping it. Just this exclusively since yesterday and 
right now we're more than 24 hours from that. It's 4.30 in the afternoon right now, and I still have battery indicators on here. I could probably get another, I don't know, three or four hours out of these batteries. I mean, these batteries really truly make this mod great. I already talked about the big dumb button that I don't like. I already talked about the scratchy, scratchy plastic back and front that I don't really like. Everything else about this mod though, I do really like. I like how big it is. That's what she said. It's a very nice size for a dual 2700 mod. You can put up to a 30 millimeter atomizer on here with no overhang at all. Don't believe me? I will prove it. Now this doesn't have any wicks or juice in it, but this is the Twisted Messes 30 millimeter, no overhang, no overhang, no overhang anywhere. It sits on there perfectly and doesn't overhang anywhere. So if you're a person that has a bunch of these big atomizers, 30 millimeter atomizers and whatnot, they'll fit on this Captain perfectly in a small size and they won't hang over. I feel like that's extra bonus brownie points for this mod. And even though the batteries are where they are, I still have this set to 83 watts on a 0.38 and it gives me plenty, plenty of power. These batteries are more than halfway done. These, there's like a quarter of the battery power left and it doesn't like bump down my wattage. It's still giving me the full power from these batteries throughout the life of the battery. Fantastic. I've been having a great time with this captain. Now we need to talk about your vape budget hands. I found this over on vaporDNA.com. It's $70, okay? Eh, $70 kind of feels a little bit on the high side. You know what I mean? There's a lot of really great mods out there. You can still pick up a Relo RX200 for around 40 bucks. Obviously, those other mods are using 18650 batteries, which are both smaller and narrower and smaller in capacity and smaller in amp limits. Whereas this mod, if you're really after it, it's gonna be 70 bucks, but you're getting a pretty fantastic mod and you're getting, more importantly, two big 2700 batteries. Like I said in my prior video, I'm much more excited about the future of these batteries than I am about this mod in particular. This mod in particular works. It works well. It gives me plenty of power, plenty battery life. The menu system is easy to navigate. It doesn't have any weird quirks, like there's no pause when you press the button and it doesn't go to sleep and you have to wake it up again. It's just an all around nice banger of a mod with the exception of those damn scratchy, scratchy front and back plates. So if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take all of my vape gear and I have nothing left to vape, is the Captain from iJoy something I would seek out and buy? Uh, probably not, but I want these batteries. I would definitely buy some 2700 batteries. And if you wanna use those right away, your options are very, very limited. There's a few 2700 mods being made. I know that the people that make the 3D printed boxer mods have a 2700 mod. I know if few people that are currently working on 2700 mech mods, but those aren't, don't exist yet. Right now, as a recording of this video, your option for a easily, readily available, mass-produced mod that uses the bigger 2700 batteries, it's the iJoy Captain. They didn't reinvent the wheel. The fact that it utilizes better batteries makes the iJoy Captain a little bit more desirable, in my opinion. So, if I wanted to use the batteries right away, yeah, my options are limited, and I would probably grab an iJoy Joy Captain, but if I have patience and I have the good 2700 batteries, I could probably just wait a little bit and get a much better mod for these particular batteries. So there you go. It is what it is. I'll post a link down in the description to where you can check this out if you are interested. But that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget you can join me and the Grim Army here every Thursday for the new and improved vlog day. Oh, it's so good. But if I don't see you there, I'll see you back here Monday for another review. Anyway, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, yeah, uh, let's keep on vaping. <sighs> Didn't even press the button.